AMD has just launched three important refresh GPUs into the market. The 6950 XT, the 6750 XT, and the 6650 XT. I've got the 6650. They tell us that the 6950 XT and the 6750 XT will continue to exist alongside the 6900 and the 6700. The 6650, however, will replace the 6600. So things are getting interesting. Things are getting interesting with this particular card. So if you were looking to buy a 6600, nope, you're gonna have to get a 6650. I tested this one from Sapphire and I like it. The biggest takeaway here is that uh, AMD is fighting relentlessly to earn their market share. And there are some things that you should know if you're going to pick up a graphics card in this market. We're, we're sort of exiting the crypto wars and there's still some pricing fluctuation and price, pricing weirdness. I mean, you're wondering where $250 GPUs? I mean, I just want to spend $200 to $250. I, I've got some news for you there, but we really need to talk about some other stuff first. <laughs> So today I've been testing this 6650 XT from Sapphire and uh, yeah I mean obviously if you've already got a 6000 series GPU you're not going to run out and buy another one that doesn't even make any sense this is a refresh so, you know it's an incremental improvement over the previous models that were launched you know last year the most important aspect of this refresh is supply more than the pricing more than the performance it's the supply of this thing oh i mean okay the pricing does matter but assuming that the pricing is not completely insane can you actually get one of these for something close to msrp that alone will make or break this card i mean look we already know that the 6000 series gpus from amd are the best gpus that we've ever seen from them and with scary generation on generation performance uplift i mean not in the context of any other GPU launch, it's breathtaking. And so the modest improvements with this over the 6600 XT with some tweaks, you know, uh, it's not, it's a refresh. Total system power usage is about 20 watts higher. I've got the receipts to prove it. Most of that comes from increased core clocks and increased memory performance. And I think the memory performance bump is a bigger deal really than the core clocks. I also think it would be interesting to have um, more of a GPU memory focused benchmark and infinity cache kind of because the cache is effective also kind of clouds how effective the memory bandwidth is but I should point out when we're talking about wattage that actually the 6600 was a little more efficient and we're talking about frames per watt than the 6650 but the absolute best performance of the 6650 XT was around three to six percent faster in games across the board even accepting that you know it's got a little bit higher power usage uh, there are not really any cases where there is breakthrough performance though going from a 6600 to a 6650 meaning that it's dramatically different in this refresh it's a little bit faster but AMD should be commended there's been almost as much performance uplift through drivers and updates since the 6600 XT launched as you get with this refresh meaning that if you bought a 6600 XT on launch day just through driver updates you're getting as much performance like as if you re fresh your card like you bought the 6650 or you, you upgraded or whatever so that's pretty cool that we're seeing you know driver updates and performance updates through driver improvements so it seems like the production process has improved and matured and the clocks can improve and AMD doesn't want to leave any performance on the table supplies may be a little bit better so we have this refresh we've also got software technologies like Radeon Super Resolution and Fidelity FX Super Resolution for games that support it so basically you're covered whether your game supports upscaling technology or it doesn't and that's really important on a card like this where it's got great raster performance but maybe you want to squeeze a little bit more out of it and yeah heck yeah the amd fidelity fx stuff is pretty awesome so anyway let's look at the benchmarks very very impressive for a card with 8 gigs of vram and a pci express 4.0 by 8 interface oh and by the way our test system here is built around the $150 on sale i5-2400. We also tested with the 5800X 3D, that's the system back there. But you're going to be more GPU limited than CPU limited with this, uh, with this GPU, with the 6650. So uh, first up, Cyberpunk 2077. Now if you were expecting a dramatic ray tracing uplift from this refresh, sorry. It's not there. But you can play Cyberpunk with ray tracing on low 
at 1080p and get nearly 60 FPS. Now if you skip ray tracing, you can do ultra at 1080p at over 60 FPS, 70 plus in fact. Borderlands 3, over 120 FPS, which is still a lot of fun. Deus Ex Mankind Divided, over 140 FPS. Fortnite, well again, it's with ray tracing, without ray tracing. You sort of have to look at it. With ray tracing, ah, you know, 68 FPS with 38 FPS for your 1% lows. But, but if you forego ray tracing in Fortnite, you can get 118 FPS with 68 FPS for your 1% lows. Pretty good, really, pretty good. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 153 FPS on high for the preset. So, yeah. And if you look at it, some of these benchmarks come close to just, you know, maybe 3% performance improvement over the 6600. Uh, and often in titles that were already pretty well optimized. But there's more at work here than just that. I mean, companies like Sapphire have squeezed even more performance out of the 6650 than AMD expected. So the numbers that AMD gave us for, you know, reference performance for 6650, this Sapphire card is even a little bit beyond that. I mean, you wouldn't be remiss to call it the Sapphire 6650 3 gigahertz edition. It's not quite 3 gigahertz, but it gets really close. And yes, that is a callback to the 7970, you know, gigahertz edition, which was legendary. So close, but not quite 3 gigahertz. Ugh. So when I'm doing my comparisons to the 6600 XT, bear in mind that my 6600 XT is performing a little better than a totally stock 6600 XT. So when I talk about ah, some titles as maybe a 3% performance uplift, my 6600 XT was probably already a little bit juiced, meaning overclocked or overclocked out of the box. And, and uh, Sapphire didn't pay extra to stick a sticker on this box that says overclock for nothing. So there you go. Now, all of the benchmarking and all of the testing that I did here is in 1080p, and that is just about the most popular gaming resolution according to Steam. But with over 100 FPS in many titles, yes, it's possible to get a pretty good 1440p experience out of this card as well, depending on the game and the visual fidelity settings that you're willing to live with. You know, if you want to run HD texture packs, then 8 gigs is going to limit you to 1080p. But if you don't want HD texture packs and all this other stuff, then yeah, it's fine. So pricing, pricing is the most important aspect. Let's break it down. 329 MSRP for the 6600, 379 MSRP for the 6600 XT, and 399 MSRP for the 6650 XT. Now partner versions such as this one from Sapphire are probably gonna be a little more than MSRP because it's got a bigger heat sink, it's got better cooling, it's got the single eight pin power connector. It's got the Sapphire Special Sauce. It makes sense it's going to cost a little more. And also, GPU pricing has been insane for the last couple of years, and pricing is weird and fluctuating, and you can't get a 6600 at MSRP. So, I mean, a gallon of milk has moved upwards like 20% in the last couple of years. Everything is getting more expensive. Making a GPU is a much more global operation than making milk. So, I would concede that MSRP may not actually be a real price. But... In my opinion, AMD is making a really good GPU, at least for the price that they're targeting. And even if you're a fan of Team Green, look at how Team Green has responded to the 6600 XT since launch, and it's a bit of a mess. I mean, first there was the 3060, and I think we can all agree that the performance there of the 3060 could have been a little bit better. And then almost immediately came the 3060 Ti. Why would you do your refresh immediately after the 3060 launch? I mean, well, it's because the 6600 and the 6600 XT were, were such good cards and so aggressive. I mean, AMD really is fighting hard for your gaming dollar. And then they also launched the 3060 12 gig, which is like the 3060 Ti in terms of pricing, but the 3060 12 gig is 300% more baffling. I mean, 12 gigs of VRAM, are you gonna play Far Cry 6 with the 40 gig texture pack on a plain old 3060? to use the 12 gigs of I mean it's just it doesn't have enough horsepower it's gonna just sit there making angry revving noises trying to use 12 gigs of VRAM I mean it doesn't it doesn't make sense it's it's in your interest as a consumer when you've got two giant companies locked in a battle for your gaming dollar and moving up or down twenty dollars can make a big difference in terms of uh, performance per dollar at this price point and if we set aside the crypto wars and pricing volatility and blah, 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 the 6,000 series cards in general from AMD are still generally the best buys in terms of frames per dollar. And the 6650 refresh just continues that trend. So that's pretty exciting. Now, at the beginning of the video, I teased you a little bit. I said, what about the 200 to $250 GPUs? Well, 
okay, I mean, the 6500 is maybe an option, but there's 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 a lot of downsides, and you know, it's a it's a peanut butter filled onion, which is food they ate during the, the Great Depression. But what's coming tomorrow? I think killer APUs are just on the horizon. Imagine a GPU built into your CPU that's about as good as a 6500. Would you spend $200 more on a CPU with a built-in GPU if that built-in GPU was as good as a discrete GPU when you go one click under the 6650? I bet you would, and I bet there's some folks inside more than one processor company that are betting the same. APUs can be really good, and that also means that Sapphire can refocus production on like a three to $400 mass market GPU and probably end up in a better spot. I mean, if you make a lot of cuts to this, you end up with something that has worse performance and it ends up kind of looking like an APU, at least a souped up APU anyway. And look at how good the GPU part of the CPU is in the Steam Deck. I mean, imagine the desktop class version of that APU with its fire breathing graphics goodness and all of a sudden, the $200 to $250 GPU sort of starts to make less sense if you can get, you know, a little bit less performance than a 6650 built into your, your processor, then yeah, you'll probably pay a little bit more for the, that gaming processor. I mean, this is, this is pretty good 1080p performance. Yeah, and sure, the APU's not here yet, but I'm willing to bet that it's gonna be here soon. At least it's not gonna take as long to get here as, we, as it took to get here with APUs otherwise. And if you pick up a 6600, close to $300, no XT or anything, just the 6600, well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good too. I mean, that's probably the sweet spot at around $300 and it's still gonna do really well in 1080p gaming and be able to maintain 60 FPS at 1080p with reasonable game settings, at least for the next several years. It's just a question of, do you wanna spend an extra $100, 100-ish dollars and get this, which you know is more like 120 FPS and depending on the game. Honestly, the weakest aspect of the 6600 and the 6600, the 6650 it remains ray tracing. Unless gaming becomes heavily focused on ray tracing, though, I don't really see that as too much of a downside. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the 6650. It's a 6600 with a little bit more juice that hopefully you can actually buy and actually buy it close to MSRP and without a lot of other headache. It's a great card for just about any game that you would want to play today. Oh, and don't worry, I'm working on a 6950 and a 6750 just to see how that plays out. A little bit more watts, a little bit more performance. I think the trend is going to hold pretty much universally across the market. And I'm thankful that Sapphire sent it over so I could play with it ahead of launch. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you'll find me in the Level 1 forums. 